Good morning. My name is Ingrid Jarrett and I'm president and CEO of the BC Hotel Association. I represent all accommodators in the province, large, small, rural, remote, and of all configurations in British Columbia. I'd like to thank you very much for the opportunity today to present to the Standing, Standing Committee on Finance and really appreciate the opportunity as well. We'll make myself available at any time should any of you have any questions. So it's no secret, the last 18 months have been extremely difficult on our sector. Businesses have closed, millions of dollars have been lost, thousands of jobs. The silver lining is we've been able to step up and play a role to support this provincial government in supporting safe shelter during uh, the beginning of the pandemic, safe shelter for evacuees. We've been able to house the homeless population and, and make available safe shelter for those essential services that continue to operate during the pandemic. We also were partners in ensuring that the uh, control of the pandemic during the circuit breaker and other restrictions were supported by the industry and again are stepping up to encourage vaccinations. Uh, we've deepened our relationship with government over this last 18 months, which has been one of the silver linings. Our industry is made up of 2,500 accommodators of all shapes and sizes in all areas of the province. The way that we really contribute is uh, our employment uh, numbers. Uh, and when you think about 85% of our businesses are small and medium sized independently owned and operated businesses, we also support youth, uh, hiring them to develop life skills, we have a large portion, over 50% of women working in our industry, millennials, young people, immigrants, new Canadians, indigenous and minorities. And overall, this complexity of our workforce is one of the most incredible things that we love so much. It's no secret, hardest hit, no doubt the last to recover given the slow, uh, uh, recovery when we're looking into the future. You know, we have reduced travel, both land border and air. International travel continues to be a mere trickle. Our cruise ship, tour, group, conference, events, sporting event, music events, uh, you know, all of those compiled to see oh, 2021 numbers over 2019 numbers a drop on average between 70 and 80%. At the same time, we're seeing a mere 7.4% reduction in fixed costs. So when your revenue is really going down and your fixed costs remain the same, that delta means millions and millions of dollars, dollars lost for these independently owned businesses. Coupled and or over top of that, we have the worst and most desperate workforce shortage that we've ever had. We went into the pandemic with a workforce shortage, and now we've lost 30% of the workforce from 2019. Coupled with, we have an extremely limited access to affordable housing. In fact, in many tourism communities, there's a zero occupancy rate for affordable housing. And when we think about everything from students to seasonal businesses, this is devastating. It's actually resulted in thousands of rooms being closed over the summer of 2021, when there was an opportunity, in fact, in July and August to have a fairly successful uh, summer season. Here's a slide that impacts or that shows from the summer of 21 to the summer of 22, how we're anticipating recovery uh, could look, all things being equal with us getting out of the pandemic. Again, we're not out of this yet. We've got another seven months before we're actually looking at the spring and summer of 2022. So we really need you as our provincial government to step up and do a few things that are gonna support these thousands of businesses around the province. And really thinking, okay, what are the solutions that we need that we can work hand in hand with? Number one is a grant program based on revenue loss over 2021, and that needs to be implemented before the end of 2021. 
invest and support a workforce strategy for tourism and hospitality. And we're working as a group of us developing that strategy. It'll be a short, medium, long term. Some of it is provincial, some of it is federal. Resume government travel. As soon as everybody gets out of their home offices and starts meeting and traveling, this is gonna make a difference to every economy. Uh, to support our clean BC energy strategy, we have analysts looking at making sure that our sector is one of those se sectors is green, clean, and sustainable. And we've got a strategy that really could use some investment. Uh, implementing energy cost relief for a hotel class. Capping online travel agencies. Our independent properties pay between 15% and 35% on every dollar when they're booking on the uh, online travel platforms, just like the uh, deliveries for restaurant commissions. Implementing a school tax reduction like you did in 2020 for our sector for 2022 would make a world of difference. Changing the property tax calculation from the, the lesser of from the greater of for best use or the previous year's revenue. We've seen enormous increases in property tax, even though we've had a devastating loss of revenue year over year. So we really need some relief from a fixed cost perspective there. And here's a slide that really shows this interconnectivity of our sector and all the contributions that we make. We are the, in the people business. It is people to people and without people traveling and without people working, our industry just cannot recover. We really appreciate your time and your understanding and we uh, make ourselves available at any time to provide any background or any additional information. We're here to support a very successful recovery and I thank you very much for your time.